Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Unmanned aerial vehicles, unmanned aerial systems, or remotely piloted aircraft are colloquially referred to as drones. Defending against these systems has been a headache for decades. Let's look at some defensive measures, such as how the U.S. deploys sophisticated new missiles to shoot down these enemy drones. Military drone history is one of constant invention and strategic inventiveness. The trip started during World War I with the development of the Kettering Bug, an early effort to add an unmanned bomb. It established the basis for later advancements, even if it never entered combat. With the MQ-1 Predator, which combined surveillance and precision strike capability and was heavily utilized in Afghanistan and Iraq, drone technology advanced dramatically in the 1990s. Especially the MQ-9 Reaper, the successor of the Predator, built on these features and became a major apparatus for U.S. military operations. With its unmatched surveillance capability, military drones like the RQ-4 Global Hawk and the creative X-47B today characterize modern warfare technology. As aircraft improved from about the 1930s, better training was needed for air defense artillery to engage aircraft flying at higher altitudes. It was soon realized that the best way to accomplish that was by means of remotely controlled aircraft. Out of this need, the target drone was born. Target drones must fly at realistic speeds and altitudes and be as cheap as possible. One way to keep costs down is to abandon landing gear systems. Modern aircraft are also usually jet aircraft so a jet-propelled target drone such as the BQM-167 Skeeter is utilized for air defense training. To cut down costs, the Skeeter is launched from a ramp with a launch booster motor, which falls away, and the drone continues under the power of its own turbojet. In flight, the Skeeter is controlled from the ground to execute the desired flight profiles for effective air defense training. To protect against low-flying aircraft, the FIM-92 Stinger infrared homing surface-to-air missile went into service by 1967. It turned out to be a very effective man-portable air defense system against various aircraft, especially helicopters. A good example is how it was used by the Mujahideen in Afghanistan against Russian Mi-24 attack helicopters. In the U.S. Marine Corps, 
the value of the Stinger is recognized, and low-altitude air defense battalions are trained to utilize the weapon against aircraft as well as drones. MQM-170 outlaw drones are launched for a live firing exercise. Targets can be targeted at up to six miles and engaged for interception at about three miles. An ejection motor allows it to clear the launch tube and operator before the two-stage solid fuel rocket ignites and it steers the missile to its target to engage it with the proximity fuse. More advanced target drones also exist. Systems like the QF-4 were basically F-4 Phantoms that had been turned into remote-controlled aircraft. Mostly employed as a full-scale aerial target, the QF-4 was a modified form of the F-4 Phantom II, used in testing and training. Conducting live fire drills and assessing the efficacy of new weapon systems was its main purpose while operated remotely. For pilots and missile systems, the QF-4 offered a reasonable target that increased tactical proficiency and battle preparedness. It gave the aging aircraft a new use, instead of simply sending them to the boneyard. In 2016, the QF-4 was retired as a target drone. To replace the QF-4, the U.S. Air Force turned to older F-16 Fighting Falcons and began turning them into remote-controlled units known as the QF-16. Instead of letting these aircraft serve no purpose, at least 210 of them were earmarked to become target drones. Maintenance and regeneration personnel at davis Monthan Air Force Base remove unnecessary manned systems and replace them with advanced remote control systems. Because the F-16 is a faster and nimbler fighter than the F-4, it makes better targets for modern air defense systems. We are regenerating the F-16s out of storage. These are going to be the, uh, the drones and they are uh, for realistic training for the pilots. To utilize the QF-16, a trained F-16 pilot does all pre-flight checks and lines the aircraft up at the start of the runway. Control is relinquished to a member of an aerial target squadron who takes control of the aircraft remotely. From that point, the aircraft is powered up and races down the runway until it reaches takeoff speed and takes off. Once airborne, the landing gear is retracted and the operator is free to perform the mission. QF-16s are painted with a bright orange scheme. This helps distinguish them from manned aircraft visually.
One of the major problems militaries are facing is how to detect and neutralize enemy unmanned aerial systems, such as drone swarms. Raytheon has tested an anti-UAS missile system called the Coyote, using two different radar systems, the KURFS precision targeting radar and the KU-720 mobile sensing radar. Tests were mostly successful, with the missile detecting its targets and detonating a warhead that spreads out shrapnel to defeat multiple threats. Even with successful systems targeting single drones, drone swarms present a greater menace. Not only does its defense have to be effective, but also as cheap as possible. A system showing a lot of promise incorporates a high-power microwave and is designated Leonidas. Leonidas can be mounted on platforms such as striker vehicles to defend against single UASs or swarms. By throwing off their electronic systems, microwaves can neutralize drones or drone swarms. Concentrated electromagnetic energy emitted by high-powered microwave weapons like Leonidas overloads and damages the control circuits and communication lines of the drone. Perfect for defense situations, this technology virtually stops drones mid-flight without causing physical harm. Its broad area impact provides quick and effective neutralizing action against swarms. A company called Anduril has another solution against drones. It uses a sentry tower which identifies threats using long-range radar, middle-wavelength infrared, and AI processing. This system can detect the target and even the location of the operator. Once the drone's location is known, the system releases a kinetic drone called Anvil which physically rams the drone out of the sky. The entire system is called Mobile Sentry and allows defense from drones from remote locations. A line of these can be set up without personnel at the site. The operators can detect and engage drones from remote locations. Other physical or kinetic solutions include drones armed with nets to catch enemy drones mid-air and bring them down by tangling up in their systems and making them heavier. Once caught, the drone becomes unstable and crashes. The interceptor can pull it to a safe place. This approach is good for sensitive locations or metropolitan surroundings since it reduces collateral risk and damage. NATO can efficiently neutralize drones by deploying nets. 
therefore offering a precision option in their aerial defense tool instead of more forceful action. One of the most used systems is drone radio frequency jammers. By jamming their radio transmissions, the handheld counter UAS Battelle drone defender disturbs the command and control links of drones. The drone defender drives the drone to go into a fail-safe mode, that of landing or returning to its operator by sending an electromagnetic pulse. Designed for simple mobility, the device has a 400 meter range of about 1300 feet, making it a flexible tool for military operations and security. Unmanned aerial systems offer additional attack options, but also leave opportunities for enemy offensive actions. While the U.S. develops its offensive drone programs, it's also spending a lot on finding ways to defeat enemy systems. These range from kinetic options to microwaves, radio jamming, and various missiles. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.